Hi, I'm Dr. Donut. And a short disclaimer for the experts. Go grab a tea or a coffee. Hi, are you a data scientist? Have you been hearing things from the ML engineers like, ugh, your code is just in a notebook? Um, what do you anticipate the API for this looking like? Have you built a Docker container for this yet? Can you put this in an endpoint? The modern data stack is a bit scary. I'd like to help. One thing that can make your models immediately easier for others to work with is an endpoint. An endpoint refers to an API. And an API accepts a request. A request contains information about what the requester wants, and sometimes adds additional information. In the context of machine learning models, APIs allow someone to provide some information and receive some data back. Most commonly, they provide some features and get back a prediction. An endpoint or an API is just a Python program. It's running all the time. If the computer gets shut down, you start it back up. It has some special functions called roots that you can call from another program. You call those routes via an address. And when you call routes, the format is specific, and that is called the API's schema. So where does this program run? Well, usually there's a computer, your laptop, a desktop, a virtual machine in the cloud running the code. The address, or the URI, can look like an IP address or a web URL, depending on where it lives. The environment it runs on, often referred to as the container, includes things like the OS, the Python version, and even the Python packages that the endpoint will need. And the APIs know the URIs for other APIs that they might need to do their work, like databases, for example. Let's do an example. Let's discuss the most hyped, most exciting model type, most Twitter extolled startup defining model of the decade. You're thinking what I'm thinking, linear regression. So you've already done your work. You've defined a linear regression model, you fit it to your data and labels, and you know how to get predictions back. So let's go ahead and add to it. Let's add fast API. So first, we're gonna import fast API. Then we're going to go ahead and import linear regression like we did before. And we're going to import your data getter. This is going to be somewhere where your endpoint knows where to get the data. We're going to create our app. And then we're going to call that data getter for the features and labels. We're going to create the model. We're going to fit the model. And then we're going to create that root that I told you about. We're going to define a new function with that root with an async extra keyword. And that predict function is going to return what you probably guessed. When you're building your endpoint, you'll need to add the lines in pink to code that you probably already have in your notebook. Note here that I'm assuming the data getter has a way of accessing the data needed to train the model apart starting the endpoint. A common pattern is to load the pre-trained model. This is often pulled from a model registry as a pickled model file. So what do you get? Well, you get a UI that allows you to open it up in your browser and interact with the API. You can test different behaviors and add complicated logic and see how that behaves. The main advantage of putting your models into an API is because it will help you have a more productive conversation with whoever will put your model into production. Other topics you might check out next or Git and post, Docker containers and environments, access control, and replication and scaling. I really hope this was helpful. And next time you build a model, I hope that you'll put it in an endpoint and play around with it that way so that you can speed up the development process and make sure the handoffs with business partners and engineering go a lot smoother. Thank you so much.